Bob, I'll start with you because it's your reporting essentially that drove uh, the fact that this in this inquiry is even taking place. This was the, the big moment of the inquiry that we had been anticipating, the testimony of the prime minister. What does stand out to you from what you heard? Like, what do you take from this testimony? Well, one of the things that stands out is that the prime minister does not read uh, briefings that are provided him from our spy service. He relies on oral briefings. Um, and as you know from the documents that we've seen tabled at the inquiry, they're quite detailed and quite sophisticated in what uh, they in laying out uh, China's interference in uh, the 2019 and 2020 election campaigns. Uh, the Prime Minister does not read this, and he also has a lot of skepticism about uh, the intelligence provided by our spy service. Uh, he's uh, quite, he said on a number of times that uh, he's not sure about the rea real reliability of some of the CSIS information, that this is just intelligence, it's not evidence, but nobody is suggesting, by the way, that CSIS uh, 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 intelligence is evidence. It, it, um, so I, I think that, to me, uh, struck me is that this is a government that really doesn't want to hear this information from CSIS. Um, it didn't want to hear it very clearly uh, when CSIS went to them about Han Dong and China's operations in term, trying to get uh, uh, Mr. Dong uh, 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 elected in or winning the nomination in 2019. Um, they just did not except that the intelligence that had been provided them uh, was was valid. Um, and so they allowed Mr. Uh, Dong to uh, w win a nomination, and he went, went on to uh, 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 become the Liberal Member of Parliament. And in terms of the 2021 election campaign, when there ceases, uh, numerous documents laid out how Chinese officials uh, uh, were mounting a disinformation campaign to defeat some conservative camp, uh, uh, candidates, and uh, information from CSIS that they had recordings of Chinese diplomats saying that uh, they felt that uh, it would be better to have a liberal minority government than the Conservatives. Again, he said, well, you know what, with that kind of stuff, I mean, I'm, you know, it could be just uh, diplomats bragging about this. So I, I'm kind of a little bit... Uh, taken aback that there is no, this does not seem to be a government that takes seriously uh, uh, intelligence provided by our, our, our spy service. Dan, this is a perfect point to bring you in on because, of course, you have a number of years at CSIS to kind of use to help inform us. I think Bob's point is a salient one. Like we heard from the prime minister, particularly the reason he was getting questions about the contents of those briefings is because they explicitly laid out how Canada's spy service viewed the threat from China as That's far right. as foreign interference, right? The word clandestine is, is yep. in those documents. So the questions of the prime minister were geared at finding out was he made aware of those yeah. details? And his point to what Bob was saying was, well, I basically am orally briefed by people yeah. like my national security and intelligence advisor. I don't read every single piece yeah. of intelligence that's uh, you know, conveyed in some way to me. Is that yeah. normal? Well, I, I, I suspect it's all true. It's, it's a matter of he's being briefed, but it's a matter of what is he looking for. And so what, what he said today, and, and his cabinet ministers have also said, is that the experience the Americans had with Russian interference, it was sort of the start. Yes, and, catalyst. And as a catalyst. And as a result, it's like the government created this Maginot line, if you will, of, of a task force, of the panel of five, very competent, experienced, distinguished uh, uh, public servants who were monitoring the elections and who would be receiving the intelligence. But you see, the Russian threat was largely technical to a certain degree and a lot of disinformation. The Chinese is different. It's human. And that's what CSIS' strength is. It's a human organization. They're recruiting sources and they're reporting it. But it's a very nuanced threat. It's not like what you would see through SIGINT or, or other forms of intelligence that you can go, aha, they've hit the threshold. Aha, that's unacceptable and we have to act. So you have a super high threshold who's deliberately set that you're not going to get a smoking gun. You're not going to get a diplomat meeting with a, a politician in a park at night and a bag of cash and you do a cause and effect analysis and you say, aha, that's why that riding went that way. You're just getting indications of intelligence. And so it's not, you, you don't have the, the, the details, you don't have the, the evidence and things that these committees and ultimately the prime minister is looking for to say, I need to sound an alarm.